Celestial greetings. I'm Janet Booth, a professional astrologer from West Hartford, Connecticut, and welcome to my program on astrology called Looking Up. Our episode today is entitled Uranus Bursts into Taurus. And you know, Uranus is famous for being very surprising and kind of uh, shocking. It rules lightning and electricity. And about every seven years, about every seven years or so, it changes from one sign to the next. So we have had Uranus in Aries since 2011 to 2012. Now why do I give that uh, two-year range? Because if you've seen looking up before or if you've studied any astrology, you know that the planets do this zigzag around the zodiac. They don't just go around in a perfect circle from our standpoint. Now, if you stood on the sun, you'd burn up, but you would see them going around in a more perfect circle around the sun. But we're on the third rock from the sun, so we're in motion too, and this optical illusion happens when a faster body passes a slower body called retrograde, which is Latin for backward step. And so when we have the zigzag movement of any of the planets, it can sometimes take across the course of two calendar years or at parts of two consecutive calendar years for that shift into the new sign to take place. And that's also happening with Uranus now. It's going to start its foray into Taurus in 2018, but it doesn't go in for the long haul until 2019. So let's talk a little bit about what this might bring. Now, first of all, you know how we say, you say potato and I say potato. There's lots of ways to pronounce Uranus. And I say Uranus and some people sometimes laugh because it sounds like a pronoun and a body part. But some other astrologers say Uranus or Uranus, or I even heard one saying Uranus. And the U rather than the U sound or your sound, is more consistent, I think, with the original Greek. Uranus was a sky god and the top god for a while. And you could go back and read some mythology about Uranus on the internet or in a book. We still have books. Um, and you'd find a lot of different stories, but most of them involve being um, castrated by his son Kronos, which is Saturn, and his testicles were thrown into the ocean, and arising from a clamshell, Venus came from Uranus's private parts. It's a gruesome story, so not a bedtime story for your children, but there's always something weird going on with Uranus. That's its main job is to have things be very individualistic or unusual or non-mainstream, we might say. And it is the first planet that was discovered after we had a telescope. So in other words, from the Sun out to Saturn, all of those planets are visible with your naked eye. But we needed to have scientific instruments, which is a very Uranian thing, in order to discover Uranus. And it was discovered in 1781 by an astronomer named William Herschel. And at first, as a planet, it was called Herschel. But because all the other planets had these mythological names for the gods, they had to give one of those to Uranus and hence Uranus. Now it's kind of funny considering if that was the top god for a while, why didn't it get one of the names of one of the visible planets? But as we can see, he had been kind of attacked and uh, maybe sort of downgraded. So this is um, the seventh planet from the sun and the fourth largest planet, but it's far enough out that that's why it took the telescope to discover it. And we would say the orbit times of the planets as they go out from the Sun increase. So Mercury goes around its closest three times for every Earth year. Venus about one and a half per Earth year. Mars two Earth years. Jupiter 12. You get out to Saturn, it's 29. From Saturn to Uranus, big leap, 84 years for Uranus. And there was really kind of nothing discovered in between those two heavenly bodies until 
the year after I started studying astrology, which was in 1977 they discovered Chiron, which they have not given planetary status to, and I'm not sure why. Maybe it's small. So it kind of falls in the asteroid category. But Chiron is a kind of go-between. It swings in almost to Saturn's orbit, swings out almost to Uranus's orbit, and kind of helps us bridge that gap between what is normal reality, the seen, the visible, into the invisible and the transcendental of the outer planets. And it's interesting that over the course of time, we've had an increase in the average human lifespan. And it's gone from, let's say, 30-ish or 40-ish back in the days of, um, I don't know, let's say maybe colonial days. And not that people didn't live into their 70s or 80s, but it wasn't the average. And nowadays, we've gotten to the point where the average lifespan is much closer to Uranus's cycle than it is to Saturn's cycle. And that's partly thanks to modern medicine. And you know, it does vary somewhat according to perhaps the uh, socioeconomic status of a country. So for instance, even today, in Swaziland, the average lifespan is 30 to 40 years, much closer to the Saturn cycle. Whereas in Japan, it's 82. In America, for women, it's up to 84 or 85. And there you have Uranus. The um, glyph for Uranus, and I should have brought that to show you, but it looks sort of like a stylized H. If you picture the uh, upright bars of H, more is kind of curved, and they're curves away from each other. The curve or crescent in astrological symbolism usually represents personality, and in between that is kind of a cross, which we call matter. So it's sort of like personalities going in different directions with their back turned to matter, which is kind of interesting. And then hanging off the bottom of the cross is a little circle, and the circle in a glyph stands for spirit. So it says sort of matter is placed above spirit, or spirits maybe descending. Um, I think the H kind of started from Herschel when they got in there. So we might think that this kind of shows that the individuals are either looking away from an interaction or kind of divorced. And in the astrological meanings of Uranus, it is a separation kind of energy rather than a bonding kind of energy, more like the moon is a bonding energy. So when Uranus first came into Aries, and remember that the zero degrees or first degree of Aries is the first degree of the zodiac, and it's a big shift from that last degree of Pisces. Pisces ruling the oceans, or let's say Neptune ruler of Pisces rules the oceans, but the sign too. On that last day that Uranus, which likes to shock and bring crazy surprising things, the last day of Uranus and Pisces, there was an earthquake under the ocean off the coast of Japan, and it caused a tsunami. Now that's very Uranus and Pisces. The next day, when Uranus shifted into Aries, which Aries rules fire and energy production, or Uranus has to do with electricity and energy production, that's when the Fukushima nuclear power plant had its breakdown because of the floods from the tsunami. So that was a very dramatic entrance of Uranus into a sign. We, I don't think, I hope, are not going to have that dramatic of an entrance of Uranus going into Taurus. First of all, that zero degrees of Aries is a degree that connects everybody far and wide. So when planets pass through that degree, oftentimes there are big news events that affect a lot of people. And if we think about it, that's the degree where the sun goes through at the spring equinox. So the equinox and solstice degrees, called the cardinal points of the zodiac, are where things happen newsworthy that affect a lot of people. So zero Taurus, not one of those degrees. Even 29 Aries doesn't have that Mm, let's say, suffering side that 29 Pisces does. So I'm not too worried. But our date that we're looking for, that Uranus is coming into Taurus, is on 
the 15th of May. And <clears throat> what's interesting is the very next day, um, Mars goes into a new sign. It's going into Leo. Now, Leo and Taurus are at 90 degrees to one another called square, kind of like they're at cross purposes. And Mars is also kind of uh, fast moving energy. So we may find that there's something that involves conflicts, which are very Martian. You know, think of the word martial law. It has a military connection, has a weaponry connection. And Uranus has an explosive side. So mm, you could see something like a surprise attack somewhere, or you could see something like an explosion of, say, um, a weapons or ammunition depot, something like that. Mm, some astrologers wonder if we will see more earthquakes with Uranus coming into Taurus because Taurus is an earth sign and it's also in the category of fixed signs, which means it's kind of stable or stubborn or holds its ground. Um, so <laughs> I'm thinking of how when there are earthquakes, the buildings that are built out of wood tend to sway with the rolling of the land. And the buildings that are built out of stone or brick, they don't want to budge. They're more likely to crack. So sometimes being steady and stable is not always in your best interest, is it? Um, hmm, there was something else I wanted to mention. Or maybe I'm going to come back to that. Mm -hmm, hmm. So much to talk about. Oh yes, I know what it was. One of the reasons I chose the title for today's talk, well, obviously the word Uranus and the word Taurus were going to be in there, and they share letters S-U-R. So I thought, why not burst, which also shares the letter S-U-R, which is kind of cute. Not exactly alliteration, which is my favorite for titles. All right, so Taurus is related to nature. Mother Nature, the land, all that grows, the animal kingdom, the plant kingdom. And when we see things like uh, crops and fertility, those are areas under Taurus's domain. So as Uranus moves through Taurus for those seven years, we may see some very big changes in how crops are, oh, either rotated or not, or nutrated through different, you know, fertilizers, or there's been these genetic modifications, maybe there's going to be more with that, maybe there's going to be rebellion against that. This rebellion and revolution are uh, Uranus type of activities. One of the things I found interesting is in the last few years, there has been a discovery of how to make electricity out of algae. And out in the Arizona deserts, where there's lots of sunshine, instead of just using solar panels, they've got these large columns, like, I don't know, 20 feet high, glass, with water in it, with the algae in it. And I don't know how they get electricity out of that, but isn't that interesting? So maybe we're going to see more nature-based sources of electrical production. Maybe more people will have what they call heat pumps, which take the heat out of the land in the winter months and the coolness out of the land in the summer months because the temperature of the earth a little bit under the surface is pretty steady year round. Then we have things like farming. Uh, one of the articles that I read it was the one in Mountain Astrologer, excellent magazine. If you're interested in astrology, they have things at a beginner and intermediate and even advanced level. So it kind of speaks to everybody. The Mountain Astrologer, TMA dot, I don't know, com probably. And uh, that author was talking about cows and how they get milked. And, you know, there's some automatic milking of cows nowadays, but maybe it's only 5%. And she expects that's going to go way up because these sort of like robot type machines 
It allows a cow to come up to the machine when it feels like it wants to get milked. And the machine will know, oh, this is Bessie. And, you know, check out how she's doing, make sure if she's pregnant or sick or whatever. And some cows like to be milked four or three times a day instead of wait until just the farmer comes and their udders are practically bursting. So isn't that an interesting little development? I like that a whole lot better than the idea of earthquakes. Um, air and space travel are under Uranus's domain and while Uranus was in Aries which is a very independent sign and Uranus is an independent energy too but we saw non-governmental independent companies starting to send rockets up into space for space travel so I don't know what kind of um, space things might be related to Taurus maybe it's just going to cost a lot more money Taurus is the sign of money. So many people, many astrologers, are expecting a real revolution in how we deal with money. And I was surprised to learn that there's not even a majority of adults in America have a bank account. I thought, how is that possible? When worldwide, it was something like 7%. So we may see more with virtual banking or just non-banking. Also, we've had the rise of Bitcoin. I heard the next thing that's coming is called Fingo Pay. So they measure your fingers, not just the fingerprint, but something with the blood vessels in it and everything. And that's going to be your identifier for linking to your bank or non-bank account, your money account. Maybe it'll all be in points. Um, so... Okay, I'm going to get to that in a minute. I'm going to come back over here to the money stuff, which was going to end up near the end in case we get cramped for time. This was Sue Tompkins' article in The Mountain Astrologer, talking about cashless society, virtual banking, branchless banking. Uh, it was half of the world's adults, the world's adults have no bank account. Okay, 7% of U.S. households. That sounds a little more. She was talking about collaborative consumerism. And I think what she meant by that is, you know, nowadays you live in a city, you don't need to own a car. There's zip cars. You don't need to own a bike. In some cities, there's the, you know, use the bicycle for a couple of hours and leave it someplace maybe other than where you picked it up. Same thing with cars. And things like Airbnb. Your own house is now a way for you to make money by renting out the rooms when you want to. The idea also of cryptocurrency is one that kind of makes money independent from governments. It's not necessarily tracked. It's not necessarily taxed. It's also not necessarily protected or insured. So you can get ripped off if somebody sells you cash for Bitcoin and then doesn't deliver the Bitcoin or something goes crazy. Nobody's there to have your back to get you your money back. In the UK, they're starting to come out with a new kind of currency on polymer notes. And these have a plastic-ish base. They last longer. They're harder to counterfeit. But for some reason, they contain a half a percent of animal fat. So there's a big fight between like vegetarians and Sikhs and Hindus, you know, people who don't want to harm the cows or use animal products and the government and... Hmm, Taurus is a stubborn fixed sign, and it rules the money, and Uranus can be very fixed too, so there's no budging on that. And Sue suggests we may also have to watch out more for cybercrime, um, maybe even more people doing digital shopping than before. And huh, she had a funny little saying here, clinging to the past can only hinder progress. Taurus is very resistant to change. Uranus is all about change and usually coming in bursts and not so much in, you know, slow and steady wins the race, which is the Taurus way. So maybe some of our changes are going to slow down or be a little more steady. If we look back 84-ish years and when Uranus was in Taurus before, it was in the early 30s and that was during the Depression. There was big banking reform. That's when we got the New Deal with lots of social programs. And Uranus also rules the masses and kind of society in general and trying to kind of equalize out. Um, 
income and money. Like right now, we have a huge and growing disparity between the rich and the poor in the world and particularly in America. And that kind of discrepancy kind of hit a peak right before that big crash in 29. So we should watch out for that. Um, it's also during the New Deal when there was all of that um, work projects, WPA they called it, and they were building highways. And now we talk a lot about wanting to have big infrastructure projects. And so expect those to come along very soon with Uranus in Taurus. Uh, Sue thinks also more people will be gardening at home, the independent side of Uranus with the fertility and gardening side of Taurus. And that like prefab home kits made a big splash in the 30s. And she's thinking there'll probably be more of that. Also, she's expecting more veganism or just more attention on eating, what we eat, eating disorders. So I mentioned how when Uranus first comes into Taurus, it's going to have that 90 degrees with Mars, which is extra accident potential. So around the middle of the month, you know, they're loosely in that days before it becomes exact, and then they're loosely in it days after. So I would say from about the 10th of May to even the 20th of May, be extra careful and patient in all of your dealings on the road, but also be careful with things like fire and electricity, because Mars rules fire, Uranus rules electricity. The um, things called the nodes, there's north and south node that make an axis. These are from the intersection of Earth going around the sun and moon going around the Earth while the Earth goes around the Sun. And when the new moons, Sun and Earth together, or full moons, Sun opposite Earth, align on that nodal axis, those are our eclipses about every six months. Well, these nodes have a lot to do with connections between people. They're a bonding indicator. And we know that Uranus is a separative energy. So there's going to be a long-term T-square between these nodes with Uranus at a perpendicular. And that goes on a lot during the year. Um, let's see. What did I say? From mid-July <coughs> of 2018 till March of 2019, they're within five degrees. September 2018 to January 2019, within two degrees. And the exact T-square is December 2nd. Now during this period, we have Mars slowing down and, let's see, I misspoke. Did I say it was going into Leo? It's going into Aquarius because that's where it's going to backtrack. Well, either way, it's at 90 degrees to Taurus where Uranus is. So we're going to have Mars get into the mix with this T-square with Uranus. And I think this is going to be difficult for couples because people who have had a long-term, seemingly maybe boring and steady relationship, Uranus is coming into this and saying, ha ha, boring no more, honey. And people will want to liven things up and do something a little bit different, you know, break out of all their old ruts. And that could be true for anybody, but I think especially for couples, and especially if they have uh, fixed signs, either one of them, which would be Taurus, Leo, Scorpio, Aquarius. So let's see, Mars is within five degrees of that node axis, late May to mid-August of this year, again, early September to early October. Well, really, let's just talk about May to October. And it's within five degrees of squaring Uranus. Let's see the exact dates, May 16th, like I mentioned, August 1st, September 18th. So around all three of those times, be extra careful. Oh, well, Mars also rules sharp things and weapons, so be careful with those too. And we're going to have Venus slows down, and it's doing a retrograde this fall, and it's going to be in Libra, late Libra, I believe, into Taurus. Oh yes, Taurus is the other fixed sign, yes. So it makes the T-square into a grand cross, and the toughest time for that is right around Halloween. So Maybe it'd be fun for a weird party, but I would hate to be starting a new relationship around then. And watch out, maybe there'll be people who are 
uh, ending relationships around then. Now, one of the toughest things that Uranus is doing, at least in the current period, this beginning part of being in Taurus, is it's in a 45 degree, half of a square called semi-square angle with Neptune. And these are both pretty slow. So this goes on for a while. And it has five exact hits that stretch from 2017 into 2019. So we've already had the first two in 2017. And when I went back and I looked at the dates of those and what was happening in the news, I went, oh my God. So August 11th was the first one. And that was right when we had all the white nationalists came for their protest to Charlottesville on the 11th. And the next day on the 12th was when that driver killed the pedestrian in the protest march. We also had uh, the Barcelona terrorist killing on the 17th of August, less than a week later. Uh, about two weeks before that was the Manafort home raid. But I think what was important here was Charlottesville, because when we came to the second date, which was the 7th of October, and guess what? The white nationalists went back to Charlottesville that same day. Now, I don't think they had an astrologer telling them when they should go protest. But Uranus rules protests and revolution. And the next day, well, no, let's say two days before, October 5th, was when this Harvey Weinstein accusation started, and that led to the Me Too movement. And all of that was very much around these Uranus-Neptune semi-squares. Now, the Neptune part has a lot to do with suffering. And it's even the ruler of oppressed people, like slaves, things like that. So when we see rebellion related to oppression, and we had these two Charlottesville things, don't be real surprised if we find some more things coming down the track when we have the next three. So the next three are coming up, uh, let's see, June 16th. That, I think, is going to be the toughest one, and it's the middle of the five, December 15th, and then May 1st of 2019. Now, the one on the 16th of June, it's making a little pattern because Venus is square to Uranus, square and a half to Neptune. So that kind of adds into the mix, and here's Venus. It's exalted in Neptune's sign of Pisces, and it rules Taurus where Uranus is. So it fits into that very much. And the moon happens to join Venus, like just exactly at that hour when this aspect is exact. But Venus is close enough into this pattern even two days before, on the 14th, which is Trump's birthday. So that's not looking too good for his birthday, and that's a new moon. So things are going to be happening and changing for him in the coming year. And we're getting down close to the end of our time here together. I did want to say our new moon in um, April on the 15th was very close. The sun and moon were close to Uranus. And we're going to have a similar thing with the sun and moon lining up moon with Uranus, sun across on the October 24th full moon. So that should be uh, something very crazy maybe right before the elections, another October surprise on this new moon we had income tax day and the online bank or the online filing for the irs went down that day so there's something crazy involving technology and money even before uranus got into taurus so you get the idea there's going to be a real bursting and things are going to be kind of crazy so one of my friends said it's important to learn how to be comfortable being uncomfortable so we'll leave you with that thought. Try to stay calm and carry on like the Brits do. And see you again soon for another episode of Looking Up. Looking up.